All right, so recording now, and this should be recording about now. And then let me, for syncing, the arrow is on legendary now. Okay, so Luis, nice guy, sent me a paid request for me to do a tier list of the 60 action stars tier list where he wants me to do a tier on these action stars and where they fit <clears throat> be pretty interesting and if anyone wants to send in more requests like this like if you're doing a tier list that's perfectly fine just let me just send me a link to the tier in order to do this like the actual website to you know, to be able to do this video and for anyone who wants to send in any other type of requests, topics, reactions, commentaries, what have you, feel free to send them either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both things are down below in the info box. As well as, I do have a selected YouTube channel, and I do have a channel on Odyssey that has a lot of my older videos. So those links are down below as well. And if you send in the link, I mean, if you sent in requests, I would get to it as soon as I can. But yeah, 60 action stars for the last six decades. Legendary, awesome, good mid, bad, and trash. I don't know who this person is. So, I'm just going to put him here just because I don't know who that is. So, it seems like they haven't been that effective to me. So, where is where and who belongs who? Well, I know easily legendary... Sylvester Stallone is number one for me. And Jar Jar Van Damme is number two. <clears throat> now after that... Arnold... As action star... I gotta put him up in the legendary category. Predator, Commando, The Terminator... You know, end of days, cloud damage. I gotta put him up there. Batista. I'll put him in good. Well, yeah, I'll put him in good. Because I do like Final Score. He was not the problem in Army of the Dead. He was not the problem in some of the lesser films. It's just the way they were written. And like I said, Blade Runner 2049, he was solid. Uh, like I said, he was solid in uh, Final Score, which is a diehard type of movie that went straight to video. Well, streaming, I mean. So, Batista, yeah. Uh, Billy Blanks, I don't put him mid. I don't love him, I don't hate him. Uh, he did fine in the Roddy Piper films, which were... Tough and Deadly, and Back in Action. I don't think he's that great of an actor. He's a good martial artist. He's a so, so a best actor. And there's a lot of films like TC2000 that isn't that great. He did one that was like a Karate Kid type of film. Oh, it was... Uh I know the name of it. MVD released a Blu-ray of it. And the, the name of it is on the tip of my tongue. But. I remember that, I remember that being okay. But it, mid I think works best for him. Because I do think Dave Bautista is a better actor. Um, it's just that. You know, he needs to get better roles. Brandon Lee. Um, I don't put him in the awesome category. Uh, the only reason he's not on Legendary is not his fault. And that is because he has a limited film filmography because of the tragic accident. Now, I love Shonen and Low Tokyo. I love, love uh, Rapid Fire. The Troll I like is a good movie. It's just hard to watch because, you know, this is the film where he died on. But again, that's three films. The other stuff was really big on. And it's just sadly he didn't get the chance to shine as much as, as others. Just because 
his if he was able to if the accident didn't happen i think he could have gone up to legendary as is brandon lee is awesome brian bosworth i'm gonna put him in good and actually i want to put him ahead of dave batista the reason i put brian bosworth is good he was a football player stone cold is awesome Stone Cold is a great action movie. Lance Henriksen is the bad guy. If you haven't seen Stone Cold, you like action movies, you need to see it. The only other film he did worth a spit was... Oh, God, what was the name of it? Uh, I can't remember the damn name. Kurt Wimmer was involved with it, and... I'd have to look it up. I can't remember the name of it, but he only did one more film that was worth anything. And then after that, he kind of fell into the straight-to-video stuff that was fairly garbage. Like, Mach 2 wasn't really that good at all. And I could visualize the cover, but I can't remember the name of it. I think Artisan Entertainment released a DVD of it back in the day. And it had like two different titles. And you know, give me a minute for the, the phone to start. But yeah, Brian Bosworth, with the football player. Stone Cold Sally did not do anything business wise. Started by Trader R. Batsley, who did I Come in Peace. And Action Jackson. And Brian Bosworth, I thought, sold the role very well. He's a top that goes undercover with his biker gang. You have Lance Hemmerson, you got William Forsyth. Just awesome movie. But that's the thing, he only has one awesome movie. Now, look real quick. And he seemed like he worked well. One Tough Bastard, also known as One Man's Justice. That's the other film he did that I did not mind. But, you know, what, back in business, you know, some of these other stuff, nah, not really for me. But, yeah, check out Stone Cold. So that alone puts him in the good category. Like I said, if he had a better streak of movies worth a spit, uh, he would have been to the awesome category. But as is... Him and Batista, they're pretty good in their acting. And they have a couple... But... If they, they Batista... And funny enough, they were both from a different avenue. One was from wrestling, one was from football. Uh, Bruce Lee... I'm going to put in the awesome category. Not legendary? I didn't grow up with Bruce Lee like other people did. These are the guys I grew up with more. I found Bruce Lee later. In fact, I thought other people were Bruce Lee. I thought Bruce Lee, L-E, was Bruce Lee for a while. Bruce Lee had the magnetism. He had the charisma. The only, only reason I can't put him in Legendary, not just because I didn't grow up with him, I found him in my teens, like Brandon Lee. And I put Brandon Lee above Bruce because I like Shodan Low Tokyo and Rapid Fire more than Bruce Lee's films. Although I, I love Enter the Dragon. I like The Bid Boss. Uh, I like uh, Return of the Dragon. Just like I like Rapid Fire, Shodan Low Tokyo, and The Crow. But of those, I mentioned Shodan Low Tokyo is my favorite. Although Enter the Dragon is really good. But, I mean, come on, they fit to be side by side, father and son. If their lives were not cut so short, they easily would be legendary. Easily would be. Now, granted, Bruce Lee, for what he inspired, is legendary. But I'm just saying of their career, they were just cut short, sadly. <clears throat> At least to me. Which is too bad. Bruce Willis, hmm. 
between the top two. I have to put them on legendary. For what I grow with in the guy, with the Die Hard films being pinnacle of action films for me, at least the first four, The Fifth Element, The Last Boy Scout, underrated films like Mercury Rising, uh, Hostage, Striking Distance is not a bad movie, like and so forth. Yeah, he had a string of bad films, but part of that is due to due to his mental dementia which is too bad he might not be the nicest guy but with his career and even films like the whole nine yards which I enjoy and others I gotta put him in legendary category for me I have to <coughs> based on his old work and the, the, the amount of stuff he's given me throughout the years. <clears throat> Charles Bronson. I'm going to put him as good. I didn't grow up with Bronson like other people did. I absolutely love Death Wish 3. I love Death Wish 3. And I'll put him there. Death Wish 3, Evil Them Men Do, Murphy's Law. You know, he has a better track record compared to the other two. But because I didn't grow with him, because while I do like Evil Them Men Do and other stuff, I don't rewatch him as much as the guys up above this list. And I mean, I didn't even talk about it. Like Stallone and Van Damme. If you know my channel, you know how much I love those. Those are my two favorite action stars. Those were my childhood. Stallone and Van Damme movies. Charles Bronson was in my childhood, other than Death Wish 3. So, there's other stuff of his I like, but I'm not big on the first Death Wish. I'm not big on, like, The White Buffalo and some of his other movies. But, I mean, good, I think, fits well. Chow Yun Fat. I'm going to put him here. Only because, again, he's great and hard-boiled. He's, I like him in The Killer, The Replacement Killers. Like I said, a very limited vocabulary, not vocabulary, but a very limited filmography. And his acting works well for what it needed to be. Uh, hmm. Trying to think. You know what? I'll, I'll put Batista mid. Only because... Batista hasn't had that awesome central movie. I think he's a better actor than Billy Blaine's, but yeah, he's had like decent films. I like Blade Runner 2049, but he's not the lead. He has had that leading action movie that was awesome. So I gotta put him in mid because of that. Chow Yun Fett has Hard Boiled and The Killer, Replaced with Killers. I was thinking of putting him in awesome. Fuck it. I'll put Chow Yun Fat there. Hard Boiled is fucking awesome. And The Killer. And even the, the Once a Thief. Like, Sally does not have a lot of stuff. You know, I, I just. This is going on gut feeling. You want to know why this app is gut feeling? Chow Yun Fat I put it as awesome. Hard Boiled alone puts him in the awesome category. It's just if he had a better track record in the U.S. Other than the Replacement Killers. Like The Corrupter, Bulletproof Mont. Like, I'm not a fan of Crusher Tiger, Hated Dragon. He'd be legendary, but yeah, Hard Boiled alone puts him in awesome category. 
Chris Evans. Hmm. Chris Evans. Where would I put Chris Evans? For action star list? Hmm. Put him mid. I like the Captain America movies. He did a good job in the Gray Man. But as an action star, he did good in Captain America movies, but the character really sold those movies as well. The shield, the uniform. Chris Evans is a good actor, but the action stars and the effects really sells the action more in those than his manly persona. So I'll put him... Well, hmm. God, now that's tough. I don't care for his politics, but he's a good actor. And I like the Captain America movies. It's just that other than those, and I like Cellular, but that's more of a thriller. Is that like a strong action? I do these a better... He has a better track record than Batista. The Captain America films alone. And The Gray Man was pretty good. Like Chris Hensworth, I would put more in mid. Uh, I like Distraction. But then you have Black Cat. The Thor films went down the tubes. Completely down the tubes. So I would put Chris Hensworth there. Taking Ghostbusters 2016 and the Vacation Reboot and all these other roles did not help him at all. At all. I like Distraction. That's why... He, but... I say he's a better actor than Billy Blanks, but... Guy needed a better agent and take better action movie roles. Thor went down the tubes. That hurt a lot as well. Christopher Lambert. Uh, he'd be in the good category. Uh, uh, I'll put him... I'll put him there. Highlander, Highlander 2, Fortress, uh, Resurrection, but that's more of a horror, so it's not action. Uh, I liked his films... I just, more Combat 95, it just, it's hard for me to put him in the awesome category, I don't quite know why, just my gut feeling of, he's good, he, but he's not like top 10 favorite, but he's good, I don't know how else to, to word it that way, I just don't. Chuck Norris is awesome. Chuck Norris is awesome. Uh, understandably, he retired to do Walker, Texas Ranger. I'm not big on Walker, Texas Ranger. I love his movies a lot more. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, it's Chuck Norris is Chuck Norris. Some of his early films, like Good Guys Wear Black, I'm not big on, but he has a pretty good track record. And fuck it. Since I think about it, his his filmography is actually pretty. The Missy and Action trilogy, Sound Rage, Firewalker, Invasion USA. Yeah, I even like Hellbound. I even like The Hero and the Terror, Lone Wolf McQuaid, Delta Force. Pretty good track record, so I, I gotta put him legendary. Clint Eastwood. I put him as awesome. It's Clint Eastwood. The Dirty Harry films I really enjoy. 
But I guess because he went into more directing and, you know, doing either thrillers, like Absolute Power. Unforgiven is a Western, but it's hard for me to call that an action film. It's more drama. And it's like, he's a good dramatic director. Breakdown, you know, to do something different like Bridges of Bassin County, The Mule. So he. In the Line of Fire was good, but you just call that more of a thriller than an action film. It's, that's it. He kind of. He didn't do action like these other guys were doing action, other than the Dirty Harry films, maybe the Man with No Name trilogy. So he kind of went away from that, other than. Like, Heartbreak Ridge is a good movie. Do I call it an action movie? That's the thing that it's hard. This is an action tier. But he definitely deserves on that list. It's not like a fucking book that I once read. That he's not an action hero. He is an action hero. And... I put him there just because of his longevity of filmography. Daniel Bernhardt... I put a beer... I'll, and mid star uh, somewhere around there <clears throat> he works better supporting John Wick nobody and some of the Matrix sequels as a lead okay as a lead I would say bad but as a support mid so it's between these two. I don't think he's that great of a of a guy action presence star quality wise. When he did the Bloodsport sequels, they wanted him to be Van Dam, let's be honest. <clears throat> Danny Trejo I would put bid. I think he's a better actor than some of these guys. But again, based on his filmography of starring, I'm not a fan of the Machete films. Predators. I think he's a good actor. I think he could be a good presence. It's just... They kind of put him into a pigeonhole stereotype. And I think he's... I don't like the way his career's been used. Or it might have been misused. And being put into a lot of crappy films, in my opinion. So he's not a mid-actor. He has a very mid-career to me because when you look at his filmography, I don't care for the machete films. I don't care for Predators. You know, I, I don't care for some of the other stuff he's done, the directed video wise Again, his track record, I like these guys' track records more. I mean, Brian Bowser, Stone Cold is awesome. And that, that elevated that. Uh, David Bradley. I gotta put him as bad. I really like... The, the movie where it's like his version of John Woo. I forget what the hell it was called now. I have the film too. Hard Justice. Hard Justice I think is really good. Uh, he's fine in it, but it's more the action sequence is really good. American Ninja 3 is good for Steve James, not because of him. The... Uh, he's not that good of an actor. I wasn't supremely impressed with him as a physical performer. His filmography isn't the best. I don't really care about cyborg cop movies, and I don't. I, I don't think he's that great grave of presence. I, I'm not big on him. Like I, I, even Billy Blanks. You know, I could deal with you know the stuff he did with Roddy Piper and stuff. It. Just, I would put Billy Blanks even over David Bradley. So I, I don't. Yeah. Not big on David Bradley. Like he could be fine at best, but just not big on him. Dolph is a damn underrated legendary. And if he's not three, I'm going to put him there. You know what? Fuck it. 
he always gets the shaft. He's going to be in the top three because this is the most underrated action star. Ico and Peace, Red Scorpion, Shodan Lo Tokyo, Men of War, Universal Soldier, Rocky IV, The Punisher, even some of his directed video films, Russian Specialist, aka The Mechanic, Command Performance, I Like the Defender. Dolph has done so much shit in the shaft. I'm gonna put him up there. Not on my he's not gonna get the shaft on my list. Dolph is awesome. Down the Dryden Wilson, to me, mid. Um, he's a pretty good martial artist. I, I have to rewatch a lot of his stuff to form a better opinion on him. I remember like his fight scenes seemed a bit more stiff compared to like Van Dam and other people. So I don't know. That that's probably a guy I have to completely. I have to rewatch his stuff. But as of right now, that's my initial feeling. Donnie Yen. Um, he's awesome. Donnie Yen definitely awesome. Complete whirlwind of fiery punches, man. Fucking crazy shit. The Yip Man movies and Legend of the Fist. I look forward to what they'll have him do in John Wick 4. So we'll see what happens. This is uh, Gary Daniels. I'll put him in good. He does have some pretty good starring roles in movies. Riot. Uh, Blood Moon I don't mind. But none of them really got to the... He never got the chance to be in the big budget movies. To really have that nice... Sh coat of paint and the budget to really let those films shine. PM Entertainment or other directed video films, you, you had some good action scenes to shine. But I mean like to have a full like grandiose director or a John Woo or James Cameron or even you know to really let them shine. But Gary Daniels done a lot of good director video films. Just he didn't get a lot to do in the mainstream, and I, I think it would be nice for him to be given that shot. Harrison Ford, uh, a awesome. Indiana Jones films, Air Force One. Action wise, this is a good thing. He did a lot of other different things. Regarding Henry, uh, thrillers, I mean, The Fugitive is action, but it's also a thriller. Uh, Patriot Deems, action, but it's thriller. Star Wars, there's a little bit of action in there. Ah, I just I put him in awesome. I don't know why I'm not putting him in legendary. Maybe because like he's a different type of action star that I think of these other guys as more of the phys. Here's the force physical. I don't know. It just it just feels right to put him in awesome. And because I can't put everybody in legendary. <laughs> Equal ways. I'll put him in good. I love the Raid Redemption, and I love Headshot. I love the ending of the Raid 2. That's pretty much it. So really it's just... He doesn't have that filmography yet for me to put him up on... above the other guys. But the Raid Redemption is really fucking awesome. And I think he has a lot of potential. It's just... People need to start utilizing them better. Jackie Chan. Uh, I put him in the the awesome category. 
his last, I mean, his past, you just say for a lot of starts, but especially, I'm not big on his early, early work like other people are and his later work, but in his prime, Rumble in the Bronx, Operation Condor, the police story films, those are just classic. Again, I just, because of, he's more comedic, these other guys are a bit more serious, and I'd say that's probably my, more my cup of tea. But what Jackie Chan does, he does very well. So he definitely deserves to be on that tier. Is this Jalal Murray? Well, he's fucking trash. That's how I just say. Trash, 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 trash. Jason Statham. I do think he's awesome. Where do I put him though? God, that's tough. I don't put him here just because of his filmography. Transport 1 and 2, Crank 1 and 2, I Like Safe. Um, I liked his acting in films like Lock, Stock is 2, Smoky Barrels, Expendables. I, I liked him as an actor, I liked him as a personality. I liked a lot of stars, it's just he hasn't had a good track record lately, but uh, I do, of the newer action stars, he's one that I do like better than a lot of other folks. Jeff Speakman. This is really more of a sentimental reason. Awesome. Just because what I just said could easily make a discount to these here. But when he worked for me, he just really worked and I was synced up with him. The Perfect Weapon, Dilly Outbreak, Land of the Free. I think he's actually a pretty damn good actor. He has a natural persona in terms of his delivery. I love his Temple Marshall style. And like the Perfect Weapon, Dilly Outbreak, like those are personal sentimental favorites of mine. Street Night, another one. This is the guy that had the most potential and Sally didn't fully succeed, which is aggravating but I would say of all the guys this is the guy with the most potential that should have succeeded a lot higher than he did Jeff Wincott definitely at the very least good Dwight Derry Daniels he was stuck in B movies direct to video a lot of them are good Last Man Standing is a really solid one Mission of Justice uh, but sadly like Derry Daniels he never got the budget even like a perfect weapon, that guy in the theaters, that type of budget, the star and a film that could really go and really fly. Jet Li. Definitely awesome. Love. But I, he's, I do think he's awesome, but I love Kiss of the Dragon. I love Fist of Legend. A lot of his American films, though, are like, I liked them, like, you know, The One is okay, and I like Cradle to the Grave, but they're not up to par to, like, Jackie Chan's American movies. So, I do think he's awesome, because I love Kiss of the Dragon a lot. That's the main reason why. It's hard to get through all these. It's 35 minutes already. It's hard to explain, because it's just more with a gut feeling. I can't have just a gut feeling. So, like, gut feeling for Keanu Reeves. I do think he's awesome. <clears throat> as, a, as an action hero, I'm going to put him here for the John Wick trilogy, Speed, and the Matrix trilogy, Street Teens. I think it's a pretty good filmography. And there's hopeful potential of the future to see more. Kevin Sorbo... I hate to do this, I'm going to put him on mid. 
but I'll put him here. I like Kevin Sorbo. I like Hercules' Legendary Journeys, but his film career is a joke. It's either a lot of religious films or it's bad films like Cold the Conqueror or Flesh Wounds. So I like Kevin Sorbo, but I gotta I got put him there. Kurt Russell is fucking awesome. Um, you know, I'll put him there just. Victor Low China, The Thing, Steve New York. That alone makes him detained on cash. A little bat draft. It's Kurt fucking Russell. I gotta put Kurt fucking Russell in Legendary. Liam Neeson. Hmm. That's a tough one. Let me think about this. Think about this list so far. I hate to do this, but I'm going to put this in the good category. The more that with Donnie in, just because his American film his American filmography has not been that great so far. He's a wonderful martial artist physically. I like Yip Man 1 and 2, and I like uh, Legend of the Fist, Flashpoint. But I didn't grow up with him. His American filmography is a bit lacking right now. Like Troop Wets 3 and other stuff. I, I turn I just have to put him in there. And then Liam Neeson. Just because I like Taken, I like the commuter, I like uh was it nonstop? The plane movie. Donnie Yen's a much better physical performer. I do think Liam Neeson's a better actor. Like a walk amongst the tombstones. And I just, I didn't, I'm only going by gut feeling. That's all I can do, gut feeling. Lorenzo Lamas, I think, is that who this is? I'm not familiar with him. So I'm only going to put him here just because. Mark DeCostos, I think he's a very underrated guy. Uh... I love Drive. Remark uh, Drive is a personal favorite of mine. I, I think he's a good actor. God, it's tough. Like the the rank them. It, it's tough. It's tough. It's tough, man. It's fucking tough. It's really fucking tough. Because it always keeps changing in my head. Like, where would Martha Charles... I do th really like him. His filmography... He's probably had a lot more duds than good movies. But I do really like him personally. Drive is awesome. That alone... Fuck it. I'll put him there. Mark Wahlberg. I talked a lot of crap about Mark Wahlberg. I mean, he's been... I like a lot of films he's in, despite the fact he's in them. So that's why I'm going to put him in here and not trash. I like the big hit and his other movies, but I wish he wasn't the star of those movies. I think he picks right projects, it's just I don't like him. Or I'm okay, or he's so-so, or fine, I'll deal with him on it. If that makes sense. Mel Gibson. I'll put him in awesome... Where do I put him though? And awesome. 
action wise I like lethal weapon and such I'll put him here for now Michael Bean just for being Hicks and Hicks is a favorite character of mine I don't, I, I'm tired I don't know I just my gut feeling he's awesome and he's up there because he's fucking Hicks and Aliens is one of my favorite films of all time Michael Dukoff he's good in American Ninja I wish he had a better filmography after that and Avenging Force because it is like strategic command and all this other stuff but I do think he's good uh, Michael J. White um, actually I put him here I like him in Blood and Bone and I like him in fucking uh, Black Dynamite but he shoots his he shoots his mouth off too much and he shoots his mouth off so much I could be Bruce Lee I could do this how about you worry about your film career and stop making crap like Welcome to Sudden Death okay Wesley Snipes is fucking awesome where I would put him I like the Lethal Weapon films, but I really like the Blade films. God. I'll put him there for now. Demolition Man. Simon Phoenix. Mick Cage, I'll put in good. But I really like him in Con Air. Willie's Wonderland. As an action star, though, I'll put him in. I'll put him there. This guy, no thanks. He was in. You could do a lot better than that. Escape from the Bronx movies it was fun, but I mean, he was there. Uh, Oliver Gruner. I did grow with him. I like. Automatic, I like Automatic Nemesis and Angel Town. He's definitely a guy I grew up with a decent amount. Although his filmography wasn't great afterwards, so that's why he's in the middle. Red Brown, him yelling and screaming, he's a lot of fun to watch. So I would always be interested to see what he would do. Uh... Richard Norton I liked, but just because he didn't get a lot of strong starring roles other than Under the Gun. He's good, but just he didn't get a lot of strong starring roles, so I would sadly put him in there. Roddy Piper. I fucking miss Roddy Piper. He's just awesome. It's, it's Roddy fucking Piper, that's why. Any guy that says... I'm here to chew bubblegum kick ass. I'm all out of bubblegum. They deserve an awesome tier. Samuel Hun, he's good. I didn't follow him as much as Jackie Chan. Um, but I like that TV show Martial Law and Enter the Fat Dragon. Very good in martial arts for his size. Steve James. You deserve this, man. You deserved a lot more. Steve James deserved a lot more. When he popped in, he shined so much that he was a great beacon. And he was great in American Ninja 1 and 2. He made American Ninja 3 watchable. This is a guy that I screwed over and deserves so much more. River Riverbend I didn't care for. This is a guy that... I put him up here. He had so much potential, but because of... BS politics and race, which is bull. I hate that. He deserves so much more. He had the charisma, he had the talent, he had the body. He had it all. So fuck it. Scott Atkins. Uh, I don't put him up here in Austin because he, of all the action guys, he's the guy that 
has the most potential and I've really liked the Accident Man films and One Shot and apparently there's going to be a sequel to One Shot which is cool. He, he worked out very well. Like, I look forward to what he's coming out next. What he has coming out next. Sean Connery. Hmm. It's James Bond. It's Outland. Dr. Henry Jones Sr. I'll put Sean Connery up there. He deserves it. Awesome. Steve McQueen. I'm only putting him here because I'm not as familiar with him. I've only seen a few bits with him in it. So I'll put him here. Seems it all. This will surprise people. It's going to surprise the shit out of people. He's not. The reason being, his first chunk of his career would be legendary. The first chunk of his career would be legendary. Above the law. Out for justice, which is my favorite. I, March for death. Hard to kill. Under siege. Legendary. But the past 20 years, he diluted himself to just good. The only reason he's ahead of these guys because those first five, six, seven movies are awesome as hell. But then he sadly shot the bed. Dwayne Johnson, to be perfectly honest, I'm going to put it there. Between good and mid. I like the rundown. I like Doom. The race to which mountain, but this is a guy that played it too safe, making too many fluff piece, mediocre junk, in one ear, out the other, forgettable trash like Skyscraper and San Andreas and Rampage and all this stuff. He has the charisma, he's got the talent, but he's played it safe doing these BS G.I. Joe 2s, all that Jungle Cruise. So, you're almost at the mid card, Rock. Town Cruise, I gotta put him in the awesome category. Um, I mean, action film wise. See, okay, that's where we're talking about action films. As an actor, bit high. As an action star, I like Edge of Tomorrow. I like the Mission Possible films. So, what else as an action star other than those? She's more of like actor, Top Gun, I guess. But I'm not as hardcore on Top Gun as other people are. I like it, but I'm not as hardcore as other people are. So, I would say, I hate I hate to do this. As an actor, he'd be higher. As an action star, like the first five systems at all films, I love to death. Tom Cruise, a lot of other films I really enjoy. But as an action star, I put him there. Vin Diesel, you're in the mid card, buddy. I'll put you there because I like the first Triple X and I like Pitch Black, but you have squandered your shit. And Tony Ja, I don't put you in the mid card. I like the Protector, I like Umbach, but what the hell has he done lately? He went crazy to live in the jungle with elephants. Or what the hell he did. Then he came back and did what? Triple X 3 and a Fast and Furious movie and other. Is he in the new Expendables film or no? I don't even remember where the hell he's doing now. Again, this is a guy that had potential and he it was squandered. You say these other guys have potential, but 
these I, I grew up with more, the more sentimental. And this is the best I could come up with, folks. I know, I know. Lucky number seven. Stallone, Van Damme, The Dolph, Arnold, Kurt fucking Russell, Bruce, and the Norris. Awesome. Jess Speedman, I think, had childhood favorite. Waddy Piper is awesome in the ring. And anytime he popped up, I was excited to see him. Michael Bean, just for hits alone, just Aliens is one of my favorite films of all time. Steve James, huge potential. Indiana Jones is Indiana fucking Jones. Jackie Chan is Jackie Chan. Scott Atkins, the new action star that I look forward to what he's doing. Keanu Reeves. As of right now, because of the John Wick and Speed, I will put him... I actually put him here because I love the John Wick films that much. And I love the film Speed. It's one of my favorite action films of the 90s. So I'll put him there. Wesley Snipes, Passenger 57. The reason he's down lower is because of his issues with acting a fool, like Blade Trinity, and then his tax evasion took him away for a lot of years of his prime. But the Blade 1 and 2, and, and Love Why Ben Can't Jump, but that's not an action film. But Passenger 57, Demolition Man, Simon Phoenix. He's Simon fucking Phoenix. No Gibson. Anyway. Yeah. That's the best I could do. Bad. Mark, Marty Mark and his Funty Bunch. There's a lot of films of him he's in I like, but I don't care for him. He's either fine I could deal with, but there's many times I'm like, can it be someone else? David Bradley, I mentioned that. Lorenzo Lamas, I just... I would put him in like the question mark category. Same with this guy. Mid, Tony Jaw and Vin Diesel had a lot of potential and they didn't do much with them. It seemed like they themselves squandered it. And The Rock is close to that. Steam Seagal's early career is great. His late career... I mean, I'm talking about action tier, action film wise, action film wise. There's more action films to go I liked than Tom Cruise action film wise. That's why I'm sp specifying it. Tom Cruise is a better actor. He's doing his own stunts. I just, but those early Seagal films are just really, I can't just discount them because of the guy he is today. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.